I've always had trouble running adventures in tabletop RPGs. Whenever I plan a big epic fantasy game, I give a set of quest lines which involves helping poor little Timmy find his red wagon, matching a dress that goes with the noble lady's hair, or stopping his Elphinar, the Lord Eater, from consuming our world and ending all existence as we know it. It's pretty obvious to figure out what one the players will take. Whatever one pays the most. But then again, why do you have to have multiple quests? I've actually had players get pissed off at me because they accidentally passed over content. Players don't know ahead of time that if they talk to the general, he's going to give them a boring fetch quest. Or they talk to Mr. Wiggins about his missing apples, he's gonna be the guy that gives them the really cool mission where they end up fighting transdimensional devourers on the rings of Saturn. Even though I knew all those problems, I tried making what I, I thought was I called a true open-ended adventure. This time I was running Fantasy Age. They were hunters. Characters that killed monsters for bounty, glory, and magic items. This time the plot line was that the Sultan was offering a 50 million gold piece reward for slaying a Kraken. So, they'll have to go out on different quests and hunts to get the experience, allies, and magical items they need to get the job done. So I just dropped them off in the world with a boat and said good luck to you guys and set sail. This was my solution to the peril conundrum I had been having in my other games, where the players would only chase down the world-ending mission and ignore everything else. It was set up in such a way that all the minor quests would give them small benefits and feed into that one major overarching goal. That worked a bit better, it had its own problems and was dry at times, but it worked. Up until the sixth session happened, the players were sailing around the coast. I had them roll for random encounters. They rolled a two out of a hundred. One out of a hundred would have them encounter the Kraken, but two, two was special. I describe how the sea is blanketed in a dense fog. Our storm mage goes to dispel the clouds and has to fight against it because it is discovered that this isn't any normal fog. It's an enchanted fog and is repelled backward to reveal a spire rising like a silver needle glistening above the sea that was too oddly shaped for it to be natural. They dock at the cave port and climb to the top where they found ancient crumbling ruins, the remains of a temple to the moon. Inside, they find a magical artifact which is generating the fog. When our dwarf walked into it, he was blasted backward by a magical force and thrown across the room. So of course he did it five more times because he thought it was funny. Dwarves. Above on the roof of the temple, they find a strange set of magical glyphs. Now, originally what I'd planned was that this was going to be a thing where they come in and they find this place and then they leave and then and then they're going to be totally okay with them not finding anything or, or getting any magical swag. Probably didn't think that one through. What I was trying to sell them was that this ocean was a real place and that this structure was going to have significance later on in the campaign. But not right now. Not right now. I mean, they couldn't do anything right now because I had set the DC so high to use this magical circle that in order to activate, they needed like a critical success. So they find out that in order to use it, the thing only activates at certain times of the week. And ah, oh, shucks, it seems like it's not that time yet. We'll wait. Well, then, so you guys wait. I was kind of hinting that maybe the players should be moving on, which they weren't having none of it. It's funny, I think the players were expecting to see something cool here because this place is hidden. If it's hidden, that means there's cool stuff here because no one goes to great lengths to hide something and it doesn't have anything cool there. And they seem dead set on not leaving this place empty handed. One night later, at midnight, there is a glow at the circle and moonlight rises up into the night sky and pierces the darkness. The youngest character runs up and vanishes in the light. The rogue and wizard are like, we gotta go after them, and jump inside, vanishing as well. The dwarf and ranger are the last ones left, and they see the light slowly fading. The dwarf is like, do we really gotta go after them? They'll probably be back, we just wait here and shove. The elf shoved him in and then jumped in herself. The light at the top of the temple dims until it fades away, leaving the spire in darkness. Somewhere else, the blinding light fades. The group is left standing in a similar circle. However, this one doesn't have the wear and tear of the other one. Did we travel back in time? We traveled back in time, didn't we? <clears throat> the group found themselves at the peak of a barren mountain range. Stretching out past the mountains was a flat expanse of black and white, pocketed by craters. Beyond that, on the horizon, were the spires of a strange city, glowing with light in the distance. Wow, we must have traveled like really, really far back. 
You guys did not travel back in time. Above your heads in the sky, you see a sphere of blue and green, and then the realization hits you. You did not travel back in time. You traveled to the moon. That temple back there, that was a temple to the moon. Like, to the moon. As in, it teleports you to the moon. <laughs> I mean, you guys weren't supposed to actually use it. This place would just be referenced later on in the campaign. And then you guys would say like, oh, hey, remember that one weird place we went to that one time and nothing happened? Remember? Yeah, I do. Wait, why are we not dead yet? The moon in my world has its own atmosphere and is breathable. It's like a separate plane of existence. Cool. Can we use this magic circle to get back? It's currently set up so that way you can get here, but you can't use it to get back. It seems like this end of the portal was closed off, but not the other one. So how, how do we get back, Ben? 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 Anyway, that's it for today's session. Hope you guys had fun. Man, I am I am really looking forward to the weekend. Got got a got a lot of stuff planned. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. <laughs>